God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. And peace to everybody here, that's here in the name of Jesus. We get a quiet another round of applause. I just want to let y'all know that we are recruiting brothers for the choir. Brothers. All right, so just keep that in mind. thought I'd just put, it out, put that out there. All right, we're going to start with our first lesson, the stumbling block. Don't get tripped up. The stumbling block. Don't get tripped up. A stumbling block is anything that would stop you or trip you up from your, or that's in your path and it's stopping you from getting where you need to be. You know, you can, a stumbling block, it comes in many forms. You know, you, you, can, you can have somebody, somebody can be a stumbling block. It could be a place that's a stumbling block. It's, it's, it doesn't necess necessarily have to be a person or a particular thing. You can be your own worst enemy. You can have a stumbling block in your mind that would block you from hearing or doing uh, something that you need to do or be about a particular thing that you need to be about. And we're going to deal with it. We're going to deal with this lesson, uh, the stumbling block. You know, because the scripture says in uh, 1 Kings uh, 38, 1 Kings 8 and 38, it speaks of every man knowing the plague of his own heart. So you know better than, any, than anybody else outside of the Lord what your particular issue might be. And it always taps you when, you, when, when, it's, when it's blocking where you need to be. Okay? But in this case, we're talking about like we're going to deal with just specifically the word of God. And, and, uh, and, and it's, it's, it's a couple of, of topics, uh, I'm sorry, subjects where it's uh, the word of God. And, and even to some, of, to some Israelites, Jesus is a stumbling block to them. You can cause somebody else to stumble while you are out and while you're walking your walk. And if you're not paying attention, and you could have been in the Word for years and years, but if you're not paying attention to what you need to be about, you can cause somebody else to fumble. And the Lord will not be happy with that. We got to always keep these, keep these things in mind. Uh, we don't preach here that you're saved and you don't have anything to worry about because if that was the case, the, the Scripture wouldn't talk about a stumbling block. You know, you wouldn't have to worry about a stumbling block. The Scripture wouldn't even mention those things. But we have to be paying attention at all times. Ever since I got in the Word, I have never thought about my actions more than what I, what I have been since the day I've been baptized. You're always thinking, is this going gonna, is, is gonna to mess me up? What's going to happen here? What, what's going to happen over here? You're always questioning what you're doing. And you've got to make sure this lined up with the Scripture because there is a price to pay for your actions. It's a price to pay for your actions. We're going we're gonna to start uh, 1 Corinthians. Like I mentioned earlier, you know, you can be a stumbling block to somebody else if you're not careful. Even though you've been in the Word for a long time, like if somebody walked through the door in here, somebody brand new, you know, and you're, you, you have zeal. When you first got into the Word, you got a lot of zeal. You know, we have to, we have to be, uh, uh, we have to catch ourselves that we don't jump on anybody fresh coming through the door because they don't know what you know. And if you mess around and you jump on them or, or, or you got to put a scarf on, you got to do, hey, they, they get into it. They're brand new. You know, you have to make sure that you don't uh, jump on them and cause them to say, I'm not coming back here no more. You know, or I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that no more. See, you will cause them to fumble. See, I, when, I, when I first got to the Word, I was the same way. I was like, you know, looking, you know. And it's, yeah, you're supposed to watch. You're supposed to make sure that there's nothing going on contrary, but there's a way to go about it. There's a way to go about it. But uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and pick it up at verse 1. 1 Corinthians chapter 8 and verse 1. Go ahead. Now as touching things offered unto idols, we know that we all have knowledge. We all have knowledge. We all know what an idol is. We know that the Bible speaks of idolatry, and we know that you're not supposed to uh, be committing idolatry. You've got to be careful with that. Go ahead. Knowledge puffeth up, uh -huh. but charity edifies. Knowledge puffeth up, but charity ed edifies. You, you can have all the knowledge in, in the world. But if you don't remember that you're supposed to love your neighbor, be loving, you know, who you're try trying to help, hey, everything else goes out the door. You have to make sure that you're doing it with the right spirit. Because you have all this knowledge, you can chop somebody up, 
and make them stumble. And all that knowledge that you had, everything that you intended to tell them is out the door. Because they don't want to hear it no more. You have to make sure that you do it with the right spirit. But go ahead. And if any man think he knoweth anything, uh -huh. he knoweth nothing, uh -huh. yet as he ought to know. Humility is important. Humility. He said, if you think that you know anything, hey, you don't know nothing at all. Every time I write a, write a, write a lesson, or, or, or I'm trying to write a lesson, you know, I examine myself, and it, it, this scripture lets me know how far away I'm off. Every time I think I'm like, right there, you know, the scripture lets me know I have so much more to do. A whole lot more that I need to work at. A whole lot more. Because you're never, like, you know, saved. Because if I was right there, if I had it all together, I would be saying that I'm saved. But that's not the case. I'm trying, like everybody else, to work out my own salvation with fear and trembling. And I'm keeping that in mind all the time. And I don't want to be, be a stumbling block to myself or to nobody else. We all out here trying to struggle and trying to get in. Skip down to verse 6. That's 1 Corinthians 8, and uh, pick it up at verse 6. But to us, there is but one God, the Father, mm -hmm. of whom are all things, mm -hmm. and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, mm -hmm. by whom are all things, and we by him. Now this is talking about, again, it's talking about idols. Uh, previous to, to this uh, verse, it was speaking about idols, and we know, uh, we know our God. We're, we, we are strong in our God. We understand what our God is saying. Well, if you're reading the scripture we, and, and, you're, and you're, you're paying attention to what's going on and you're trying to do the word, hey, the Lord lets you know who he is. And it, it won't be a mystery to you. For he says in verse, he says in uh, verse, verse, uh, verse 6, he said, but to, us, but, the, but to us there is but one God, the Father, of whom are all things, and we in him, and one Lord Jesus Christ, by whom all things, and we by him. Go ahead. Howbeit, there is not in every man that knowledge. Everybody don't know that. Everybody don't know that. Everybody don't know what you know. We have understanding about, about our God. So again, what it's saying is, it's, trying to, it's leading us in a way of telling us, hey, don't assume everybody knows what you, you know. And don't uh, be quick to just jump on them. Hey, let, just you know, be, uh, give, them, give them space to learn. Give them space to learn. Go ahead. For some with conscience of the idol, unto this hour, eat it as a thing offered unto an idol. Uh -huh. And their conscience being weak is defiled. See, and you'll mess them up and say, how be it, there is not in every man this knowledge, for some with conscience of the idol, they, they know the idol, they, know, they have an idea about this idol. He said, unto this hour, eat it, eat it as a thing offered unto an idol, but their conscience is weak. Be it, but their conscience being weak is defiled. They weaken the faith, but they're watching you, in other words. They're watching you and, make, and, and seeing how you handle yourself around the idol. Everybody's paying attention to how you are operating so that they know. People are watching you. They're watching you, but go ahead. But me commend us not to God, for neither if we eat are we the better, neither if we eat not are we the worse. Go ahead, but we know uh, uh, unclean, unclean meat wasn't even a question here. We know that. Go ahead. But take heed, lest by any means this liberty of yours become a stumbling block to them that are weak. Because you know what you should be about, and by you going about just doing what you want to do, or you have knowledge of, of doing as far as meat and drink, you know what, you, what the do's and don'ts are. You, you can't just take it for granted. This brother over here know. You understand? If you are going, uh, a brother here mentioned me about, uh, like you going, if somebody is at a Christmas party. Okay, somebody, and I don't, we don't celebrate Christmas, we don't condone it. But if you are at your job and you preach to somebody, you understand, you just happen to see them up in there and you just happen to just, you know, go to them like, look, look around this. You know, look, they celebrate Christmas. Look what it says, it says in Jeremiah, you know, Jeremiah 10 that you're not supposed to be doing this. Look what they're doing, you know. You're not going to sit down and start eating the food and laughing and <laughs> enjoying the, all that, all that folly. You're not going to do that. You're not going to do that. And it said, but it says, verse 9, it said, but take heed, lest by, lest by any means this liberty of yours, just because you go in there and you trying to teach him and trying to preach to this one particular brother, somebody else see you in there, and they sitting down and seeing you uh, taking part of festi festivities instead of preaching, you mess him up. That's watching you. You understand why you preach this brother? You got to, in other words, take knowledge as to what you're doing. Because you can, you can cause somebody to stumble if that particular brother is weak. Go ahead. Verse 10. For 
For if any man see thee which has knowledge set at meat in the idol's temple, mm -hmm. shall not the conscience of him which is weak be emboldened mm -hmm. to eat those things which are offered to idols? He might see you over there and he's like, you know, all of a sudden you start sitting down and instead of you preaching and all this and trying to show somebody something, you're not taking part in festivities because you know that uh, trans, if you are in that Christmas is, is, is idolatry. Straight out. It's just idolatry. And you're not going to go in there and start dealing and being around them and just like ha-ha and all this and he he and eating and chewing. You're not going to do that because you can't take because you know what they're doing. They are in there celebrating a false god. But you in there, you know what you're in there for. You are trying to teach this particular person something. And somebody else that you might have been preaching to, they might see you in there and they're watching you all the time. And if you sit down there and you start eating, he might think, there's nothing wrong with that, so I'm going to sit down and eat too. See, I'm going to sit down and eat too, but go ahead. Verse 11. And through thy knowledge shall the weak brother perish for whom Christ died. Go ahead. But when ye sin so against the brethren and wound their weak conscience, ye sin against Christ. See, so now by you causing him to stumble, you, I mean, by you, uh, by you going there and you not watch what you're doing, you done cause somebody else to stumble. You done mess somebody else up. See, and the Lord, he will not be happy with that. Because now you become a stumbling block to this brother. See, long time ago, when I first got into the Word, uh, Brother Elijah was, he, he was preaching to me. You know, him and this other brother, they were preaching to me. And I was like, I didn't uh, want to get it right off because I was in the Sunday. I came up in a Sunday church. So I watched everything that they did. You know, one of the brothers came over to the house, and he called himself starting, starting to preach, you know. And I watched everything that he did, everything. Because I want to find something to say, hey, that's not right. Brother came over to the house, you know, sat down there. He came over there with a beer in his hand. And he sat down, I'm a Sunday Christian. That's what I was, that's what I was doing. I was a Sunday Christian. He was, I'm drinking, and you call yourself a, a, a Christian? Oh, no. So he drinking and drinking and all of them. Look at him like, that couldn't be right. You know, there was a big thing about that. And he almost caused me to stumble because after that, I didn't want to hear nothing else he had to say. Nothing else. We have to remember that same answer because other people watch us all the time. We have to watch our actions. We have to watch our actions because God, guess what? God cares about how we represent him. He cares. And if we are not paying attention to what we're doing and we cause somebody else to stumble, we put ourselves in jeopardy. We, got, we put ourselves in jeopardy. Did you finish that? Let's look at uh, Ecclesiastes. Ecclesiastes. And, it, and, and nobody is exempt. Nobody is exempt. We got to be careful across the board. We got to be careful across the board, all the way across the board. You know, be you in the Word for 10 years, 15 years, 20 years, be you teaching a vacuum on the floor, it don't matter. You got to make sure that you are watching what you do. You have to. Ecclesiastes chapter 10, and pick it up at verse. One, Ecclesiastes 10 and verse 1. Go ahead. Dead flies caused the ointment of the apothecary to send forth a stinking saint. Now, the apothecary means like somebody mixes up, uh, mixes up something, like a pharmacist, or somebody's mixing perfume. Okay? He said, dead flies caused the ointment of apothecary to send forth a stinking saver. Okay? So have you, I don't know, if, when they used to have them halo, them uh, halogen lights that came out, those real skinny lights that had a little, you know, bowl at the top to turn it get real hot. Have you ever smelled the fly that flew up into that? It stinks real bad. How would you like to put that on for some perfume? You know, that stinks bad. But that's what he's saying here. He said, dead flies cause the ointment of apothecary to send forth a stinking savor. Go ahead. So doth a little folly him that is a reputation for wisdom and honor. He said, don't matter. He said, so does a little folly. A little, if you mess up a little bit, if you're not watching what you're doing, you get caught up on some folly, you could have been in the Word for 10, 15 years, and guess what? You just, call, you just set yourself back a long time. A long time. If you don't get cut off. You got to watch what you're doing. And that's what we teach here. We teach that you're supposed to fear God, teach, work out your salvation with fear and trembling at all times. You're, never say, you're not saved until thy kingdom come and you are in it. You are in it, and you have a body just like the, just like the Lord's. That's when you can say, okay, I'm saved. 
You understand? But until then, hey, you still got to work. And, and, and if you can poke yourself and you still, or you can cut yourself and it, it bleeds, you ain't saved yet. You ain't saved. You still on the road. And you got to stay on that road. You got to stay on. Let's look at Ezekiel. I'm sorry, uh, Numbers. Let's look at Numbers. Because he said, uh, a little folly, so does a little folly him that is known of reputation. Numbers chapter 16. Numbers 16. Because you represent the God of all spirits, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. You are an Israelite. And that's what we do. We represent the true and living God. That's what we represent. That's who we represent. And we have to make sure that we are representing him correctly because he cares about how we represent him. Number 16, and pick it up as uh, verse 1. Number 16 and verse 1. Go ahead. Now Korah, the son of Issah, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and Dathan, and Abiram, the sons of Eliab, and On, the son of Peleth, sons of Reuben, took men. Uh -huh. And they rose up before Moses with certain of the children of Israel, 250 princes of the assembly, uh -huh. famous in the congregation, uh -huh. men of renown. Men of renown. These are, one, these are they that are known for, for reputation. For the reputation. They are men of renown. Okay, go ahead. And they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron, and said unto them, Ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation are holy, mm -hmm. every one of them, mm -hmm. and the Lord is among them. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, then lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. See, now they, were, they, they wanted more than what they had. The Lord had already given the sons of Kohath a, a position. They were Levites. Okay, and all this time they are kicking and scratching, all of them kicking and scratching to go back to Egypt. Now, had they had the opportunity to take the reins from Moses, they would have just turned everybody around, like, okay, y'all, we got to, we going back to Egypt. See, but they and they were and, and they right now they are becoming stumbling blocks. He said they gathered themselves together against Moses and against Aaron and said to them, "Ye take too much upon you, seeing all the congregation is holy." Every one of them, and the, Lord, and, and the Lord is among them, wherefore lift ye up yourselves above the congregation of the Lord. But see, Moses wasn't doing that. Moses was doing what the Lord told him to do. Every time he had a situation, he took it to the Lord. So the Lord was the one that was dealing with Moses. So they actually are arguing with the Lord. Go ahead. And when Moses heard it, he fell upon his face. Uh huh. And he spake unto Korah and all his company, saying, even tomorrow, the Lord will show who are here uh -huh. and who is holy uh -huh. and will cause him to come near unto him. Mm -hmm. Even him whom he hath chosen will he cause to come near unto him. See, because Moses knew. He said, the Lord, he said, the Lord will show you who is his and who is holy. And that's what you don't have to, you don't have to show you how, how holy you are or whatever. You just keep doing what you're supposed to do. You understand? And as long as you're doing what you're supposed to do, when people notice and you're doing what you're supposed to do, they can give praises to God. Because you're only serving God. You're not serving yourself. Unless you feel that you are too sharp or whatever case it be, and you got to always be on somebody or whatever, you are only serving yourself. That's what you're doing. But go ahead. Verse 6. This do, take you senses, Korah, and all his company. Mm -hmm. And put fire therein, and put incense in them before the Lord tomorrow. Uh -huh. And it shall be that the man whom the Lord doth chose, he shall be holy. Mm -hmm. You take too much upon you, ye sons of Levi. You say you take too much upon yourself, ye sons of Levi, but go ahead. And Moses said unto Korah, Here, I pray you, ye sons of Levi, seemeth it but a small thing unto you, that the God of Israel have separated you from the congregation of mm -hmm. Israel uh -huh. to bring you near to himself to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord. He said, is it a small thing to you to do the service of the tabernacle of the Lord? They had a good job, but that wasn't enough for them. Go ahead. And to stand before the congregation to minister unto them. Now keep in mind, these are men of renown. So everybody is watching them. Everybody's going to follow their lead. See, everybody's watching them seeing what's going to happen. Go ahead. And he hath brought thee near to him, and all thy brethren, the sons of Levi, with thee. Uh-huh. And seek ye the priesthood also. You want the priesthood too? Go ahead. 
For which cause both thou and all thy company are gathered together against the Lord. And what is Aaron? that ye murmur against him. Go ahead. And Moses sent to call Dathan and Abiram, mm -hmm. the sons of Eliab, which said, We will not come up. Now after they didn't open up their mouths and Moses put them on the spot, I don't want to have nothing to do. I'm not coming. I'm not going nowhere. I'm not going, you know, you take care of that. You know, now you don't open up your mouth and everybody's watching you. And now when it's time to put up a shut up, now it's like you quiet now. You know, they didn't open up their mouths, and now people are looking. They, I mean, pe they cause people to stumble right here because now everybody is doubting what Moses was saying about the Lord, how Moses was teaching, how Moses was leading. But actually, they were doubting the Lord. Go ahead. Verse 13. Is it a small thing that thou hast brought us up out of a land that floweth with milk and honey to kill us in the wilderness, except thou make thyself to altogether a prince over us? See, all this talking they're doing. And they're doing it without wisdom. See, and that's what somebody, that's what a stumbling block will do. He'll open up his mouth and he's not thinking, of, he's not thinking about nobody except himself. He's not thinking about nobody except himself and he'll trip up every, everybody else. It don't matter. Right. See, as long as he gets his point across. See, the Lord is the one that's leading them. The Lord is the one that's guiding them. It's the Lord that's doing it. But go ahead. Moreover, thou hast not brought us into a land that floweth with milk and honey. Who was leading them? The Lord was. The Lord was giving Moses direction. Go ahead. Or giving us inheritance of fields and vineyards. Without put out the eyes of these men, we will not come up. Go ahead. And Moses was very wroth and said unto the Lord, Respect not thou their offering. For I have not taken one ass from them, mm -hmm. neither have I hurt one of them. The Lord, had, he had to tell me, like, hey, Lord, don't respect their offering. He was upset because they were blaming him for doing something he, didn't, he wasn't doing. But they were the stumbling blocks. Go ahead. And Moses said unto Korah, Be thou and all thy company before the Lord, thou and they and Aaron tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Skip down to verse uh, 21 and read. Separate yourselves from among this congregation. I'm sorry. Uh, uh, verse 20. I, I should have put that in there. Verse 20. And the Lord spake unto Moses and unto Aaron, saying, mm -hmm. Separate yourselves from among this congregation. Because the Lord was listening to all that they were saying. Everything. He heard everything that was going on. The Lord is paying attention because these are his people, just like he pays attention to us because we seek to keep his laws, his commandments. We seek to do his will the same way. We don't have to, we don't have to put up no fight. All we got to do is do what the Lord tells us to do, and guess what? He'll guide us the rest of the way. He can hear, and in the last day, he's going to separate the wheat from the tares. But you don't cause nobody to stumble in your foolishness and think you're going to get away with it because the Lord see it. He said, the Lord spake unto Moses said, and, and Aaron said, separate yourselves from among this congregation. Go ahead. That I may consume them in a moment. He didn't have enough. Go ahead. And they fell upon their faces and said, O God, the God of the spirits of all flesh, mm -hmm. shall one man sin and wilt thou be wroth with all the congregation? See, he was upset. The Lord was upset. He was ready to kill him. This is what an intercessor would do. I mean, a, a mediator. Or an intercessor for that matter. This is what he'll do. He won't think of himself. See, he's a true servant of God. Moses could have been like, well, let them go ahead, Lord. Take care of that. But he started praying for him. Go ahead. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, speak unto the congregation, saying, get you up from about the tabernacle of Korah, mm -hmm. Dathan, and Abiram. Mm -hmm. And Moses rose up and went unto Dathan and Abiram, mm -hmm. and the elders of Israel followed him. Mm -hmm. And he spake unto the congregation, saying, Depart, I pray you, from the tents of these wicked men, mm -hmm. and touch nothing of theirs, lest ye be consumed in all their sins. He said, get away from them. So if you've been listening to what they were saying, hey, you got the choice now. You can either stay with them and roll with them, or get away from them. See, he told them, get away from them, stay with them. Go ahead. So they got up from the tabernacle of Korah, Dathan, and Abiram, on every side, and Dathan and Abiram came out and stood in the door of their tents, mm -hmm. and their wives, and their sons, and their little children. Mm -hmm. And Moses said, Hereby ye shall know that the Lord hath sent me to do all these things, all these works, mm -hmm. for I have not done them of mine own mind. See, this lets us know that the Lord don't take care of babies and fools, right? Because we see here, he said in 27, he says, So they got up from the tabernacle of Corinth, Dathan and Abiram on every side, and Dathan and Abiram came out. They came out and started looking around like they didn't do nothing. He said, and stood in the door of their tents, and their wives and their sons and their what? Little children. 
and their little children. Because basically, they were out there. They had to be crazy to, 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 uh, to uh, ignore what the Lord was doing. They had to be. Because the Lord had delivered all of them out of Egypt. He did all these plagues in Egypt. They got to the Red Sea. He split the Red Sea in half. Let them all go through dry shot. He started feeding them. Moses wasn't taking bread and stuff out of his pocket doing all that for them. Giving them this and that. It was the Lord. But they took it upon themselves and started uh, 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 bad-mouthing Moses. But in essence, they were bad-mouthing God. And they were taking that. Everybody that was looking over there, the men of renown, they always have people that want to be like them. Or want to, you know, want to associate themselves with the men of renown. So that's, that's why it's important that you got to make sure that you are careful in what you're doing. Because if you are not, you are subject to trip up somebody that might be watching you. That might be watching you. You've got to be careful. We're around here. We have to be careful as to what our actions are all the time. Question yourself. Because guess what? If you trip on one of the lowest people, you've got to pay for that. You have to pay for that. When we're up here, we can't just say whatever we want to say and think, we, you know, nobody, is, you know, we don't have to pay for it. If we cause people to err or make people stumble, we are in trouble. See? And that's the way I think all the time. All the time. So that's why I say uh, uh, that, that y'all pray for us when we are up here, that the Lord's will be done. Go ahead. Verse 29. If these men die the common death of all men, or if they be visited after the visitation of all men, mm -hmm. then the Lord hath not sent me. Go ahead. But if the Lord make a new thing, and the earth open her mouth and mm -hmm. swallow them up, with all that I pertaineth unto them, and they go down quickly into the pit, mm -hmm. then ye shall understand that these men have provoked the Lord. Go ahead. And it came to pass, as he had made the end of speaking all these words. As he made the end, of, it didn't take an hour or two. It happened as soon as he was finished. Go ahead. That the ground clave asunder that was under them, mm -hmm. and the earth opened her mouth and swallowed them up, mm -hmm. and their houses, and all the men that appertain unto, the, uh, unto Korah, and all their goods. Mm -hmm. They and all that appertained to them went down alive into the pit of the earth. Go ahead. And the earth closed upon them, and they perished from among the congregation. They couldn't blame that on Moses. They couldn't blame that on Moses. They, the Lord killed them. And that should have been enough. And we, and we ain't going to keep reading, because if we keep reading, we will see as soon as the uh, people had saw that they had what happened to Korah and them, guess what? They, you had another group that started acting crazy. You done killed the people of the Lord. Moses didn't do it. The Lord opened up the, uh, up, up the earth and swallowed them people up. But again, the point is, if those people, when those men of, of renown were talking, they were probably drawing people to them. Hey, you listen to people that sound like they got some sense. You understand? But you, if you're not paying attention to what they're saying and you start following them, guess what? You are becoming, they are making you stumble. You ain't, they are making you stumble. Let's look at uh, 2 Samuel. You got to be careful all the time. Paying attention. The scripture says, watch and pray. That's why we all got our Bibles open and we all read the scripture. Second Samuel chapter 11. Here's another example. Second Samuel chapter 11 and pick it up at verse 1. Second Samuel 11 and verse 1. Go ahead. And it came to pass after the year was expired at the time when kings go forth to battle that David sent Joab and his servants with him and all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon mm -hmm. and besieged Reba. Mm -hmm. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. Go ahead. And it came to pass in an evening tide that David arose from off his bed and walked upon the roof of the king's house. And from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, mm -hmm. and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. He should have kept moving when he saw that in his peripheral. He should have kept it moving. He should have kept it moving. But this is going to stump, this is going to trip him up. Go ahead. And David sent and inquired after the woman. Mm -hmm. And one said, is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? That should have made him put the brakes on right there. It should have been over. But go ahead. And David sent messengers and took her, and she came in unto him, and he lay with her. Mm -hmm. For she was purified from her uncleanness. And she returned unto her house. Go ahead. 
And the woman conceived and sent and told David and said, I am with child. Let's look at uh, 2 Samuel chapter 12. 2 Samuel chapter 12, because now after it's all over, you know, after it's all over, now, da now the Lord is going to send Nathan to David. Because uh, that's one thing, we, that's another thing we have to pay attention to. The Lord see everything. The scripture says the eyes of the Lord are in every place, beholding the evil and the good. You know, you just make sure that you're doing what you're supposed to do. You make sure that you're doing your job. The Lord got this. He got it all. And it, 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 the, Lord, it's, the scripture says a, a thousand years to us is one day to the Lord. One day. He see everything that's going on. We don't have to say, look, hey, we, we got to make sure that you're doing your job. You understand? Make sure that you're doing what you're supposed to do. Go ahead. And the Lord sent Nathan unto David, and he came in unto him and said unto him, There were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. Uh-huh. The rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds, mm -hmm. but the poor man had nothing save one little ewe lamb, which he brought, had brought up and nourished up, and it grew up together with him and with his children. And it did eat his own meat mm -hmm. and drank of his own cup mm -hmm. and lay in his bosom and was unto him as a daughter. And there came a traveler unto the rich man, and he spared not to take of his own flock and of his own herd to dress it for the wayfaring man that was come unto him, but took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man that was come unto him. Now David, king of Israel, man after God's own heart, you know, every, he had, when he was, uh, right before he became king, hey, he had a lot of people following him because everybody knew that he was sent from God. Everybody knew. And, he had, and when he became king, he, he took upon himself to, to sleep with this man's wife. He could have had any, one, any woman he wanted to, but he chose this man's wife. Understand? And by that, he caused, we don't read it, he caused, he was going to cause people to blaspheme, or for that matter, he caused them to stumble. He could make them stumble. And, uh, and don't think that you're going to make somebody stumble, and the Lord is not going to deal with you. You can't think like that. Go ahead. Verse 5. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. And he said unto Nathan, as the Lord liveth, the man that hath done this thing shall surely die. See, now you want to have some judgment. Go ahead. And he shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. Mm -hmm. And Nathan said to David, thou art the man. Have you ever been, you know, talking to somebody, you know, and telling somebody something, then all of a sudden your, your, your mind starts pointing at you like you bogus. You are bogus. You know, you've been, you, you've done, hey, your own conscience will convict, will convict you. Your own conscience. That's what happened here. He said, Nathan said to David, thou art the man. Can you imagine how David looked like? They know. Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord God of Israel, I anointed thee king over Israel, mm -hmm. and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul, mm -hmm. and I gave thee thy master's house and thy master's wives into thy bosom, mm -hmm. and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that had been too little, I would have moreover have given unto thee such and such things. He would have gave whatever he asked for. He would have gave whatever. Go ahead. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Because when you go contrary to the word, contrary to the Lord's commandments, you hate the Lord. You hate the Lord when you go contrary to his commandments. You don't keep his, his commandments, you don't keep his Sabbath day, and you cast behind your back. You hate the Lord because that's what his commandments. You hate what he said. You don't keep his dietary law. You hate the Lord. You don't love the Lord. The Lord ain't for all this, uh, I love you, Lord, and you know, these praise services and all the tears coming down to you, hallelujah. No, he don't care about that. He can your actions. He, he, God is a God of knowledge, and by him your actions are weighed. You can speak all day with your mouth, but God tries to raise in your heart. You only fooling yourself if you think you're out here and you're going and, and to do what you want to do. And you cause everybody around you to stumble. And guess what? You think you're going to walk away clean? David didn't do it. And we have these are our examples right here. We have to make sure that we are taking acknowledge, we are not acknowledging what the Lord is doing right here. We have plenty of, of examples. Go ahead. Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword, uh -huh. and hast taken his wife to be thy wife, and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Uh -huh. Now therefore the sword shall never depart from thine house, 
because thou hast despised me and hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. Go ahead. Thus saith the Lord, Behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thine own house, mm -hmm. and I will take thy wives before thine eyes and give them unto thy neighbor, and he shall lie with thy wives in the sight of this son. See, and the Lord was doing all these things for David, contrary to when he, I mean, before he had made this mistake. The Lord was fighting for Israel. David, hey, the Lord was teaching David how to battle. The Lord was meeting David and showing him all these things. And then for David to go out there and do, uh, do, do contrary, it don't matter how many scriptures you know. You know, how much that you can, you can uh, 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 quote a scripture. That don't matter. Do you understand? You have to do what you're supposed to do. That's it. That's what separates the servants of God from everybody else. And we have to make sure we keep that in our minds all the time. All the time. There's no, uh, there's no way around it. You are either going to serve God or you're not. If you, if, and if you plan, you are causing somebody else to stumble. That's what you're doing. That's what you're doing. You have to be careful. And if the Lord has allowed you to live this long after you don't fumble the ball, you better pray for mercy and keep it moving. Keep it moving. Go ahead. But thou didst it secretly. But I will do this thing before all Israel and uh -huh. before the sun. Uh -huh. And David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. David humble himself. Go ahead. And Nathan said unto David, The Lord also hath put away thy sin. Thou shalt not die. Thou shalt not die. But that didn't erase all the other stuff that was going to happen to him. But again, the Lord is merciful. The Lord is merciful. David could have been like, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm messed up. I might as well go and do what I want to do. No. Because you still have to fear the lake of fire. You still have to, you still have to fear, fear that. And if you, don't, if you forget that, guess what? You better watch your mind because you might have one of those reprobates going on. You got to be careful. Go ahead. How be it? Because by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. Uh -huh. The child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. You see what he said? He said, how be it? Because of this deed. What you done did? He said, thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of God to blaspheme. You gave everybody else a reason to look crazy. Look at them. They call themselves over there. They doing that. Look at what she doing. Or look what he doing. Wasn't they over there just showing me all these scriptures? And that you said, somebody was probably listening to you. They probably look at them like, you know, when you, that ain't nothing but Satan. That's the biggest stumbling block of all. He sitting up there like, look at them. See? Look over there. See, you have to be careful what you're doing. You have to be careful. Because the Lord cares how you represent them. He said, you have given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord, people that don't care about the Lord one way or the other, to blaspheme. To blaspheme, he said, and the child also that is born unto thee shall die. Did you finish that? Okay, let's look at, uh, let's look at Ezekiel, uh, Ezekiel, Ezekiel chapter 14. Ezekiel 14. Now we saw how knowledge puffeth up and how it can be a stumbling block. We saw how men of renown can be, you know, people that have understanding about the Lord, if we don't, if, if, if everybody for that matter that call themselves seeking the Lord, if, if, they don't ha if they don't watch what they're doing, that's been in the Word for a long time, you understand, have some understanding about the Word. If you don't watch what you're doing, you can be a stumbling block, okay? But now we're going to look at another a, a stumbling block, because uh, uh, we know Satan, we know Satan is the biggest stumbling block on the wicked end, but you have some Israelites that can't get past Jesus. And Jesus has become a stumbling block for them. He's become a stumbling block for them. Ezekiel chapter 14. Ezekiel 14. And pick it up at verse 1. Ezekiel 14 and verse 1. Now, we know Satan, he don't want you, he, he, don't, he don't have a chance to get in, in, in the kingdom. He's done. So, misery love company. You know, he want to take you right along with him. He's the biggest stumbling block of all. But you got to open up your eyes and see and believe in the door, the one that you got to come through in order to get into the kingdom. Ezekiel 14, pick it up at verse 1. Go ahead. Then came certain of the elders of Israel 
unto me, uh -huh. and sat before me. Uh -huh. And the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their heart, mm -hmm. and put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Go ahead. Could I be inquired of them by them at all? See, so they already had this, this particular thing. They were worshiping already. This, this particular, this false god they believed in. And they had it in their mind already. So it didn't matter. And then they come to uh, Ezekiel, you know, acting like they wanted to seek the Lord. They already knew what they believed. They already knew what they believed. And they, they, they didn't think the Lord knew. He could see. The Lord searches the reins of the heart. He see all these things. He said, and, and he said, these men have set up their idols in their heart. That was their stumbling block. Their own mind. It was they stumbled like they had a block in their mind. See, like I mentioned in the script, the scripture says earlier that every man knows the plague of his own heart. You know what you're supposed to be dealing with. It hits you in your head all the time. You already know what you stumble at. You better deal with it. You are supposed to grow. If something doesn't grow, what does that make it? Dead. dead. It's dead. You're supposed to grow. You're supposed to be trying to deal with it all the time, trying to get rid of it. All the time. And it is a work. That's why we know that you are not saved. That's what the scripture says. Contend for the faith. You're going to always be running. You're going to always be running. You're going to always be contending all the time. There's going to always be a battle going on. To the point where you're going to be grabbing your mind like what in the world. But you got to keep it moving. You got to keep it moving. Because we're only here for a short time. Life is but a vapor that appears for a moment. Then it's over. See, we need some good works. We need a lot of good work, so get them. So get them. Go ahead. Don't get tripped up. The stumbling block. Don't get tripped up. Uh, uh, let me see. What's the verse three? Read that verse three again. Son of man, these men have set up their idols in their hearts uh -huh. and put the stumbling block of their iniquity before their face. Uh -huh. Should I be inquired of at all by them? Go ahead. Therefore, speak unto them and say unto them, Thus saith the Lord God. Every man of the house of Israel that setteth up his idol in his heart mm -hmm. and putteth the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face. That's the stumbling block of his iniquity before his face. Go ahead. And cometh to the prophet, I, the Lord, will answer him that cometh according to the multitude of his idols. Yeah, I'm going to give him what he want. That's what he want to worship? I'm going to give him now. I'm going to let him worship that. But when it's time for some deliverance to be going on, hey, he better call on that thing that he believed in to deliver him. See? That's what it was. But he had put it already in his heart. He already made up his mind. But you know those people, they don't really believe in Jesus. You know, say like the Pharisees and the Sadducees that, that were coming to Jesus to pre preach it. I mean, uh, uh, they were coming to Jesus asking them questions. They didn't really believe. They didn't really believe, but they kept coming to him asking them questions. See, and he just let them go on here. He dealt with them, let them go on here. But go ahead. Verse 5. That I may take the house of Israel in their own heart mm -hmm. because they are all estranged from me through their idols. See, because all them idols kept them from dealing with the Lord. Them, they were stumbling blocks so that they couldn't deal with the Lord. Because there's only one God, one faith, and one baptism. See, that's all. You got to make sure that you're dealing with the God that's written in this book. That's it. It don't make a difference what everybody else is doing. You got to pay attention to what you're doing. You got to always pay, be, be paying attention because they could be, a, that, that, that thing will become a stumbling block to you and make you fall will mess you up. Let's look at uh, Ezekiel uh, chapter 3. You finish that? Yeah. Ezekiel chapter 3. We're going to read one verse here. Ezekiel 3. And verse 20. Wait a minute. Tell me that's not right. Yeah, that's it. Ezekiel 3 and verse 20. I was in the wrong place. Ezekiel 3 and verse 20. Go ahead. Again, when a righteous man doth turn from his righteousness mm -hmm. and commit iniquity. See, this, that, that little phrase lets us know that no man is saved. Nobody is saved. Because you can become, you righteous, you can turn wicked again. Right. See, everybody got a chance. The wicked become, can become righteous, the righteous become wicked. Hey, it don't make a difference. Because as long as uh, the scripture says a living dog is better than a dead lion, but you know what you should be about. He said... He said, uh, when a righteous man doth turn away from his righteousness and commit, and commit iniquity, go ahead. And I lay a stumbling block before him. He shall die. See, and this stumbling block, hey, this could be something from the Lord. It don't have to be a, a person, place, a thing. It's whatever that's getting you caught up in the beginning anyway. 
See, when it never pulled you away from being righteous and the Lord gets tired and he cuts you off because he will cut you off. See, uh, contrary to what you have, you have people believe in this cream puff God that's not gonna, that, that is not going to do nothing to you. See, where's the fear in that? There's no fear. You can do whatever you want to, do what you want to, when you want to, and it's, it's all right. But that's not the case. The Lord has a point where he will cut you off. He will cut you off. You cross the line with the Lord, he'll cut you off. He said, and, he, and I lay a stumbling block before him, he shall die. Go ahead. Because thou hast not given him warning. Uh -huh. He shall die in his sin. Uh -huh. And his righteousness which he hath done shall not be remembered. Go ahead. But his blood will I require at thine hand. See, you got you to gotta make sure that you're trying to do the best you can all the time. All the time. It's never over. You can't never get comfortable in this. You be reading the scripture and all of a sudden you be like, wow, you know, yeah. I'm going to use me for an example. I use, I read the scripture and I'm looking like, man, I really, I got to shake my head like I got to get it together. You know, I got to get together. I'm not out there acting crazy. I'm like, I got to do that. I got to get it together. You know, and you always trying to do better all the time, all the time. And the Lord see it. The Lord see it. Let's look at our Romans. Romans 10. Romans 10, and pick it up at verse 1. Romans 10 and verse 1. Romans 10 and verse 1. <coughs> you can read it when you get there. Brethren, my heart's desire and prayer to God for Israel is that they might be saved. Go ahead. For I bear them record. That they have a zeal of God, but not according to knowledge. Now, you got, like I mentioned earlier, you got Israelites that have put the stumbling block in their mind. They don't believe in Jesus, will not believe in Jesus. You know, I, for, some years ago, I was preaching to this brother, and everything was all right until I mentioned the name of Jesus. And all of a sudden, he's like, I, you know, the next day, he came back, and he started acting crazy, like, I spit on the name of Jesus, and all he just started tripping. I mean, real bad, and I had never seen nothing like that before. You know, and I was new in the word, but you got a lot of people out there that's like that. You know, when you start dealing with the word, you have a lot of people like that. Yeah. You know, they got this stumbling block in their mind. They can't get past Jesus, but guess what? This is the one that's going to judge them. It's the one that's going to that's, that's gonna judge them. He said, Brother, my heart desire and pray to God for Israel is that they might be saved. And I want all Israel to be saved. I want them all to be saved. He said, for I bear them record, they have a zeal of God. They got all these garments on and all that. They be out here, you know, preaching and all this other stuff. But then you, if, you're not, if, you, if you're not paying attention to them, you think, well, look at that, you know. Until you start listening to what they're saying, like, they crazy. They crazy. And they just talking and all this other stuff, cussing and, and all this other, all this doing too much. You know, all this extra stuff. But uh, let's look at, uh, go, go to uh, Isaiah. Isaiah 8. Say, oh, you don't know his name. That's not his name. There's been some names popping up now. I ain't never heard. You know? Ain't not in the scripture. I ain't never heard. I don't think I need to get another book to read them. Isaiah 8. And pick it up at verse 13. Isaiah 8 and verse 13. Go ahead. Sanctify the Lord of hosts himself. Uh-huh. And let him be your fear. Go ahead. And let him be your dread. Let him be your fear. Let him be your, your dread. When you understand what the Lord is capable of doing, hey, you fear him enough not to make them same mistakes you've been making years ago. You clean yourself up. You clean up your mind. And he's seeing, and he pours the spirit on you some more, and some more, and some more. And you continue more and more to the perfect day. And it's because our minds, our minds are changing. But if we stop our minds from changing, hey, we dead. We did. It's up to us to get all the knowledge that we can get, all the good works that we can get, all the good works. Don't set no stumbling blocks in your mind. Don't allow nobody to trip you up with that folly that you and you know it's folly when they start start saying it. But you can't you can't give it no credence if you can't read it in the scripture. Don't believe it. Don't believe it. Go ahead. And he shall be for a sanctuary, but for a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. Uh huh. To both the houses of Israel. You see that he said he gonna this this he said this uh 
He said, sanctify the Lord of hosts himself. Let him be your fear. Let him be your dread. And he shall be a sanctuary. He's going to be a sanctuary for you because you're going to know what's going on. You're going to know what's going on. You shall know the truth and the truth shall set you free. You have some understanding about God and you know that you're not serving him blindly. He said, but for a stone of stumbling and for a rock, rock of offense to both the house of Israel. And this reigns true. Somebody calls themselves an Israelite. They don't know who, who, who Jesus is. Or they curse the name of Jesus. Not curse. You already know where they're coming from. It says right here, the scripture is true. He said, but for a stone of stumbling and for a rock of offense to both the house of Israel. Go ahead. For a gin and for a snare to the inhabitants of Jerusalem. And he is a gin and a snare to them. But he, we know who he is. We know Jesus is God. He's the same God in the Old Testament and the New Testament. That's God. That's the God of all spirits. That's who that is. That's who that is. The same God that killed Kohath in them. Same God. That's who was in the Old Testament. That was Jesus. But go ahead. Did you finish that? Let's look at uh, Isaiah chapter 7. Skip back one chapter to Isaiah chapter 7. Isaiah 7. And verse 10. Isaiah 7 and verse 10. Gee, the people stumble at the name of Jesus. These are the ones that are getting tripped up. Go ahead. Moreover, the Lord spake again unto Ahaz, saying, Ask thee a sign of the Lord thy God. Ask it either in depth or in height above. Uh huh. But Ahaz says, I will not ask. Neither will I tempt the Lord. Mm -hmm. And he said, Hear ye now, O house of David, is it a small thing for you to weary men? But will ye weary my God also? Go ahead. Therefore the Lord himself shall give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall conceive and bear a son now, and shall call his name Emmanuel. Now I say a virgin shall conceive and call his name Emmanuel. So wherever you find this virgin that conceived and his name is called Emmanuel, Emmanuel, Emmanuel being interpreted God with us. That's who, that's who this, talk, this is talking about. But go ahead. Um, was that it? That's it? Well, let's see who it's talking about. Let's look at uh, Matthew chapter 1. Matthew chapter 1. We got three more after this. Matthew chapter 1. Matthew 1 and verse 18. Matthew 1 and verse 18. Go ahead. Now the birth of Jesus Christ was on this wise. Mm -hmm. When as his mother Mary was espoused to Joseph, before they came together, she was found with child of the Holy Ghost. Go ahead. Then Joseph, her husband, being a just man and not willing to make her a public example. See, because Joseph, he didn't go into Mary. She was, she was pregnant with the, 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 the Holy Spirit had overshadowed her. She was pregnant with Jesus. But go ahead. Was minded to put her away privately. Mm -hmm. But while he yet thought on these things, behold, the angel of the Lord appeared unto him in a dream, mm -hmm. saying, Joseph, thou son of David, mm -hmm. Fear not to take unto thee Mary thy wife, mm -hmm. for that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Ghost. Go ahead. And she shall bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Which is Savior. Go ahead. For he shall save his people from their sin. Go ahead. Now all this was done that it might be fulfilled, which was spoken of the Lord by the prophet Savior. Mm -hmm. And we just read this. Behold, a virgin shall be with child, mm -hmm. and shall bring forth a son. And they shall call his name Emmanuel. Go ahead. Which being interpreted is God with us. See, this is the this, but this is the stumbling block to all those Hebrews that don't even read the New Testament. They don't have nothing to do with the New Testament. See, this is a stumbling block to them. They, oh no, I can. And you can read it in the Scripture. The Scripture is clear on it. The Scripture is clear on it. Let's look at Psalms 22. Psalms 22. We'll go all the way back to the Old Testament. Psalms 22. I was, I was showing this uh, sister in Philadelphia. You know, she was there, and uh, she had watched the class. She, she, she attended the class, and, uh, and she heard the whole lesson. But it was a Gentile in the class, and she couldn't get past that. I didn't know it, you know, but she couldn't get past that. And um, 
she came to me, she was like, uh, you know, she was holding a baby, bouncing a baby, like, you know, um, you know, I, I don't know, uh, you know, I don't know why, why is she here? And she had heard the whole lesson. She heard the whole lesson. You know, we didn't do it on, on, on who Israel was and strange. We didn't do it on that. She heard the whole lesson. And I showed in Ezekiel, what well, a stranger, hey, if they choose to be a part of Israel, they could be a part of Israel. And I showed her that. And she read it. And she read it a couple of times. This is a few times in, in, in Ezekiel, all over the place, as a matter of fact. But I showed her a couple of times, and she said, you know, I'm going to have to ask my, my teacher about that. And I ain't seen her since. See, that was a stumbling block for her. See, because the scripture was being read. It was being read. She saw it. She saw it. And she was like, uh uh-uh. Because you can tell when somebody sees something, it paused, made a pause, and she was like, I ain't seen her since. You know, that's a stumbling block for some people. Just like Jesus is a stumbling block for some people. And this is the one that can give you eternal life. He says, search the scriptures for what they are written of me. See? Go ahead. Uh, Psalms 22 and verse 1. Psalms 22 and verse 1. Let's look at a few of these phrases to see who this lines up with. Psalms 22 and verse 1. Go ahead. My God, my God. Why hast thou forsaken me? Uh huh. Why art thou so far from helping me? Mm-hmm. And from the words of my roaring. Go ahead. So skip down to verse verse eight. We know who said that. Go ahead. He trusted on the Lord that He would deliver him. Uh huh. Let him deliver him, seeing He delighted in him. See, this, this is a stumbling block for you know somebody that don't believe in Jesus. They won't. They won't believe that this is who this is speaking of. This is talking about Jesus. This is talking about His crucifixion. And what the people that's what, what he said and what was done and what the people said while he was being crucified. He said, My God, my God, why has thou forsaken me? And this is uh, verse 8. He trusted on them that would deliver him. Let him deliver them, seeing he delighted in him. This is not David talking. Go ahead. Verse 16. Uh-huh. For dogs have compassed me. Uh-huh. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. And we know this is not David by this statement. Go ahead. They pierced my hands and my feet. They didn't pierce David's hands or his feet. See, this is speaking of Jesus right here. This is the, this is the stumbling block to those that don't believe, who are being tripped up. This is a stumbling block to them, but not to us. He's a sanctuary for us because we understand who this is. Go ahead. They part my garments among them mm-hmm. and cast lots upon mm-hmm. my vesture. Go ahead. Oh, is that it? Let's look at our Matthew, Matthew 27. The stumbling block, don't get tripped up. I've seen brothers come in here before and uh, sit for a while, have some understanding about the word, and, but then all of a sudden, Jesus becomes an issue. You know, Jesus becomes an issue, then you don't never see him no more. See, they get tripped up by Jesus. Matthew 27, and pick it up at verse 45. Matthew 27 and verse 45. Go ahead. Now from the sixth hour there was darkness over all the land until the ninth hour. Now this is at the crucifixion. Go ahead. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried with a loud voice saying, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani. Now what does that mean? Go ahead. That is to say, my God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? Didn't we just read that? Way in Psalms. It was prophesied that he would say that. Go ahead. Trusted in God, let him deliver him now, if he will have him, for he said, I am the Son of God. See, see that? Go ahead. You skip back and forth here. Go ahead. Verse 35. Go verse 35. And they crucified him and parted his garments, mm-hmm. casting lots, mm-hmm. that it might be fulfilled which was spoken by the prophet. Mm-hmm. They parted my garments among them, mm-hmm. and upon my vesture. Did they cast lots? We read that in Psalms 20. We just read that. See, don't, don't let the stumbling block trip you up. Don't let it trip you up. We know who Jesus is. And again, we're speaking of stumbling blocks here. We're not talking about Jesus uh, 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 all together the whole lesson, but we just point to a few stumbling blocks, Jesus being one of them. And don't let him trip you up because this is the one that you've got to come through to get into the door. He's the one. He's the one. Let's look at the last scripture. First Peter. First Peter two. Let's 
We're going to sum it all up. 1 Peter chapter 2. And pick it up at verse 1. 1 Peter 2 and verse 1. Go ahead. Wherefore, laying aside all malice uh-huh. and all guile uh-huh. and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speaking. All this stuff that will trip you up. This is, these, are, these things can become a stumbling block to you. All these things. Laying aside all malice and guile. Watch it when just out there talking crazy, you know. And you're not watching what you're saying. You know, go ahead. As newborn babes desire the sincere milk of the word, mm-hmm. that he may grow thereby. Because it's important that you grow and learn and grow. Go ahead. If so be ye have tasted that the Lord is gracious, mm-hmm. to whom coming as unto a living stone, mm-hmm. disallowed indeed of men, but chosen of God and precious. Disallowed, because Jesus was disallowed. He's still disallowed by men. But he's been chosen of God, the Father, and precious. Go ahead. Ye also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house uh-huh. and holy priesthood. Because that's what's important. Spiritual, the spiritual land of things. Go ahead. To offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. Go ahead. Wherefore, also, it is contained in the scripture. Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect, precious, and he that believeth on him mm-hmm. shall not be confounded. Shall not be confounded or won't be tripped up. Won't be stri- tripped up. He won't be, uh, he won't, uh, a stumbling block won't get in his way because he shall know the truth and the truth will set, set him free. He don't have to worry about somebody coming and telling him some false doctrine and being led away. You know, he don't have to, have to worry about that. He won't have to worry about that. Go ahead. Unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious, uh-huh. but unto them which be disobedient. All to, to the disobedient. The ones that don't believe, the ones that say, well, you know, I serve my way, you serve me, my way. Or that old G's got a problem. It's amazing. You got the, uh, the, the, the Sunday Christians, they say uh, the New Testament. We just New Testament Christians. We don't believe in that Old Testament. The, uh, old, the old school Hebrews, you got Muslims and everybody else, and, you know, we go by the uh, Old Testament or some of the books of the Old Testament. They don't even go by the whole Old Testament. And they do away with the New Testament. You got six in one end and a half dozen in the other. You know, you don't have the whole book. So that messes you up all together. But go ahead. Unto you, therefore, which believe he is precious, uh-huh. but unto them which be disobedient, the stone which the builders disallowed, the same is made head of the corner. He didn't be in head, made head, of, head of, of, of the corner. Go ahead. And a stone of stumbling, uh-huh. and a rock of offense, even to them which stumble at the word. And we know who those are. We, we talked about them. Those that stumble at the word. Go ahead. Being disobedient. Uh-huh. Whereunto also they were appointed. So that's, stumbling, that's the stumbling block. Don't get tripped up. I hope you got some understanding in Jesus' name.